Welcome to this video on what is Web 3.0. So in this digital landscape, we witness a profound evolution from the static pages of Web 1.0 to the interactive platforms of Web 2.0. But what exactly distinguishes Web 3.0 from its predecessors? Web 3.0, the next stage, is like a highway. It's built on decentralization, meaning users are in control, not big companies. So in this video on what is Web 3.0, we will cover what is Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. How is Web 3.0 different from them? Which all technologies use Web 3.0 features? and Web 3.0 use cases and applications, and much more. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Also, if you want to become a full stack professional, then Simply Learn's postgraduate program in full stack web development in collaboration with Caltech CTME can help you accelerate your careers as a software developer. In just few months, you will master modern coding techniques with bootcamp level intensity and becoming a full stack technologist. This program lays the foundation for crafting full stack web apps using Java. To join this PGP in full stack web development, you will need a bachelor's degree with an average of 50% of higher marks. Basic programming knowledge, preferably two plus years of working experience. That's it. So what are you waiting for? Check out the link in the description box for more details. So before understanding Web3, let's understand what are Web1 and Web2. So imagine the internet as a big playground. Web1 was like the first version of this playground. It started in the 1990s and went in on to early 2000s. During this time, People mainly used the internet to read stuff on web pages and talk to each other. It was like reading a book for chatting with friends, but on a computer. Web 1 was built on something called open protocols, which basically means it was set up in a way that anyone could join and share information. It was like having a big party where everyone could come and chat. As time went on, people started using the internet for more things like buying and selling stuff, that's e-commerce, and doing research. But mostly, it was kind of like a one-way street with people mostly just reading stuff. Then came Web2, which was like an upgrade to Playground. This happened in the mid-2000s with Web2. Suddenly, people could do more than just read stuff. They could create their own content like posting pictures, sharing stories or writing on blogs. Companies like Facebook, Twitter and Wikipedia popped up during this time. They made it super easy for people to create and share their own stuff. But there was a catch. Even though these platforms were free to use, users didn't always realize that they were giving away some of their personal information in exchange. So yeah, this was about Web 1 and Web 2. Now let's talk about how is Web 3 different from Web 2. So in the Web 2 era, big tech companies hold the reins over transactions, content and data. But with the emergence of Web 3, things could change. Supporters of Web3 believe that users will gain control over their own information without relying on middlemen like we do now. This shift could shake up how information gets handled, how money flows on the internet and maybe even how online companies operate. Another big difference is how trust works. In Web2, when you do something like send money or share information, you need to trust the other person and often a middleman too to handle your data safely. But in Web3, trust works differently. Here transactions only happen if certain conditions are met and the data is confirmed. No need for users to trust each other directly. Web3 operates on a decentralized system, meaning there is no central authority controlling everything. Instead, transactions are verified and executed automatically by computer programs called smart contracts. The concept of blockchain technology, which is essentially a secure and transparent digital link. Every transaction made on the Web3 network is recorded on the blockchain, creating a permanent and temper-proof record of activity. Alright, so this was about how is Web3 different from Web2. Now let's have a look at the features of Web3.0. So Web3, the next evolution of internet, boasts several distinctive features that set it apart from its predecessors. So first is cryptocurrency enabled. One of the defining features of Web3 is its integration of cryptocurrency into its framework. 
Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum serve as the native digital currencies for transactions within the Web3 ecosystem. These decentralized digital currencies enable peer-to-peer transactions without the need of intermediaries, fostering a more inclusive and efficient financial system. The next is decentralized. So in Web3, decentralization is a key. Unlike Web2, where power is concentrated in the hands of few centralized entities, Web3 operates on a decentralized network of nodes. This decentralized architecture ensures that no single entity has control over the entire network, promoting transparency, resilience, and censorship resistance. All right, coming to the third, which is blockchain-based. So Web3 relies heavily on blockchain technology to secure record transactions. Blockchain, a distributed ledger technology, provides a temper-resistant and transparent mechanism for storing transactional data. Each transaction on the Web3 network is cryptographically linked and recorded in a chronological order, ensuring immutability and transparency. All right, then semantically organized. Yes, Web3 aims to organize information in a semantically meaningful way, allowing for more efficient, secure, and retrieval of data. Semantic organization involves structuring data in a way that enables computer to understand and interpret its meaning. By leveraging semantic technologies such as linked data and ontologies, Web3 enhances the interoperability and discoverability of information across the decentralized web. All right, now coming to Web3.0 use cases. So Web3.0, the decentralized web opens up the world of innovative use cases and applications that revolutionize how we interact and transact online. Here's a simple breakdown of some concepts. First is NFT, that is non-fungible tokens. NFTs are unique digital assets stored on a blockchain representing ownership, a specific item, or piece of content like digital art, collectibles, or virtual real estate. They enable creators to authenticate and monetize their digital creations while buyers can own and trade these assets securely. Then there is DA apps, that is decentralized applications. So DA apps are applications built on blockchain networks operating without a central authority. These apps offer various functionalities such as decentralized finance, DeFi, gaming, social networking, and more. DApps provide users with increased security, transparency, and control over their data and transactions. Then the next one is smart contracts. Smart contracts are self-executing contracts with predefined rules and conditions written in code. They automatically execute and enforce arrangements when specific conditions are met without the need for intermediaries. Smart contracts powers various decentralized applications and enable trustless transactions on blockchain network. Next one is DeFi. So DeFi or decentralized finance refers to financial services and applications built on blockchain networks, aiming to democratize and decentralize traditional financial systems. DeFi platforms offer services like lending, borrowing, trading, and asset management without relying on intermediaries like banks or brokers providing users with greater financial autonomy and inclusivity. All right, the next is DAOs, that is D-A-O-S, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. DAOs are organizations governed by smart contracts and operated by the members without centralized control. Members collectively make decisions and manage the organization's resources using transparent and decentralized voting mechanisms. DAOs enable collaborative decision-making and resource allocation in a trustless and transparent manner. So this was about the use cases of Web 3.0. Now let's understand the advantages of Web 3.0. All right, so here are the advantages. First one is enhanced privacy and security. So decentralized architecture reduces reliance on centralized servers, minimizing the risk of data breaches and unauthorized access. Next is financial inclusivity. Decentralized financial DeFi allows individuals worldwide to access financial services like lending, borrowing, and trading without traditional intermediaries. Next is innovation and creativity. Decentralized application that is DApps and non-fungible tokens enable creators to monetize their work and users to own unique digital assets, fostering innovation and creativity. Then there is transparency and trust. Smart contracts and decentralized autonomous organization, that is DAOs, ensures transparent and automated executions of agreements, fostering trust with the community and reducing the need of intermediaries. All right, next one is global accessibility. 
So Web 3.0 breaks down geographical barriers, providing access to services and information to individuals worldwide, regardless of their location or background. So as we conclude our exploration of Web 3.0, we have journeyed through the evolution of Web 1 to Web 2 and now to decentralized landscape of Web 3.0. We have unraveled the distinctions between Web 2.0 and decentralization successor, delving into the technologies that underpin Web 3.0 and its myriad features. From enhanced privacy and financial inclusivity to innovative applications like DeFi and non-fungible tokens, Web 3.0 offers a transformative vision for the future of the internet. Alright guys, with that we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching, stay safe and keep learning. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.